Welcome everybody, wherever you're joining me tonight. My name is Professor Tim Campbell. I'm a visiting professor of international management at the University of Northampton. And I look after the Middle East intake of the MBA, of the Executive MBA program, Executive Master of Business Administration. So um, I'll be presenting to you tonight um, for about 15 minutes, then I'll take as many questions as you have at the end of that. So I call it the Middle East intake of the MBA program, but actually we get students from far further afield than that. It's just that traditionally when we had the face-to-face -face workshops, and I'll talk more about that later, we would run them here in the United Arab Emirates. So it sort of became known as the Middle East intake. But uh, as I say, we do get students from much further afield. And I'm coming to you from Dubai. I live in the region, which of course is why I look after it as well. Anyway, more about all of that later. Let us get on to what we're going to do tonight. So as I said, I'll spend about 15 minutes, no more, just giving you a short presentation of the Northampton EMBA program. You would have got lots of details already from the, from the MBA team at Stafford. You're probably talking to Mario, Ruksha, Helen, uh, Rafi, somebody there who's given you lots of information. So you've already got the details. And what I want to do is just pick out some highlights um, from my perspective, because as I, as I say, I look after the program and I also teach on it. I teach the Managing and Organizational Behavior module. So I can give you an insight, sort of an academic insight to the program as well. So I'll do that for about 15 minutes, then I'll take any questions. Before we get on to talking about the Northampton EMBA program, just a word about Stafford, because these are the people, the very good people that would have brought you here tonight. And as I mentioned, you would have been talking to someone in the MBA team, I'm sure. So I just want you to be sure of what Stafford does and how it differentiates from what the university does. So you would have had a look at Stafford's website and seen it's got a long history here in the Middle East since 1993 and currently partners with six British universities offering programs all the way from certificates all the way up to doctorates. Now what the company does for the University of Northampton in particular is marketing and student recruitment in our regions in the Middle East, Africa and further abroad. Um, for the university because that's something that's very difficult to do from its campus in the UK. So it partners with Stafford who can help out with all of those types of things, marketing, student recruitment, administration, etc., looking after students in general. But it's very important to remember that when you enroll on the program, you are entirely a student of the University of Northampton. The academics come from there, the, uh, your degree comes from there, the transcript, you're bound to all of the rules and regulations, everything else. So that part of it, you're solely with the University of Northampton. So that just gives, so as I say, I just wanted to make sure you're, you're aware of how the two companies fit together. Now, talking about Northampton, where is it, you may ask? Well, on this map of the UK, I've put a big blue arrow that points to it. And Northampton's an old historic town that's been around for a very long time and appears throughout English history. And it's about 100, about 100 miles, I would have thought, north of London, about an hour by train anyway. And it's a lovely old, uh, lo lovely old historic town. And it used to be, before August 2018, you would find the University of Northampton campus just on the outskirts of the town in the countryside but they spent a long time building a brand new campus, which opened in August, 2018, which is now right in the middle of the town. And if you're looking at the slide here, it's everything within those little, all those red dots. So it's a very advanced uh, campus. And it's on a lovely site, very modern. And if you ever get the chance, I would always say go and visit it. And certainly for graduation, you will be invited to go there for your graduation and definitely take the opportunity to do that. So that's where you find the campus. The university itself, you'll find out all the information you need by having a look at Northampton's website, northampton.ac.uk. So make sure you have a look around there, have a look, all, a look about uh, um, where its history, about us, all the different things it does. 
do familiarise yourself with that. But in a very brief, education in Northampton dates back to, well, a long time ago, about the 13th century, that similar, or similar time to the origins of Oxford and Cambridge. Um, and then it's had a long history, to cut a long history short, those ancient origins, education was around in Northampton since those times, but the modern university itself dates to about 100 years ago when it was a technical college and different things. And then it's developed into what it is today. As I say, have a look on their website and you'll see their, their whole story of the history of the University of Northampton. And it's an interesting one. And it is, of course, a big place, as many most UK universities are. It's got about 14,000 students at around about 1,500 staff. But what we really want to talk about tonight is the Executive MBA programme. So let's get on to that. So this is the programme with the University of Northampton. And very simply, you start at one end, critical issues in business, and you make your way all around the top, down the bottom, to business research project. So you cover a total of eight modules. Uh, the modules, it's a very nice program because it's a very mix of sort of uh, traditional MBA programs. When I say traditional MBA, all MBAs are actually very similar. The, uh, the ethos behind them is that you must understand the different functions and the different management principles if you're going to manage and be a, an effective business professional. So you need to understand something about accounting, you need to understand something about marketing, something about strategy, etc. And that's important for any manager in any organization, no matter what the size or what it does. That's the ethos. And you'll see that here in this MBA program. You learn about finance and accounting, strategy, marketing. Uh, in my module, we do some HRM, those types of things. But there's also a nice mix of contemporary topics as well, such as um, uh, it, we talk about innovation these days. There's a whole module about leadership. These days we talk more about leadership in organizations than we do about the management of them. Uh, and there's also issue, issues that you cover in um, critical issues such as risk and sustainability and all these types of things as well. So it's a nice program that mixes the traditional MBA with some of these new challenges that we, that we, that we grapple with sometimes. And how it's taught, it takes about 18 months to go from that critical issues module all the way around to your business research project. And these modules are about 10 weeks apart. So you'd start with your critical issues, you'd have a two day workshop, which I'll talk more about in a minute, and then about 10 weeks later, you would do your next module. And, the, and what you would do between the workshop and your next module is you're working on the university's virtual learning environment to do your assignments. And then you'd be working and using all the materials that are available there. So a fairly simple program, you start at one end, you do a new module about every eight to 10 weeks. And that's what is on this slide here. So there's eight workshops in total, and they're about 10 weeks apart. Importantly, the teaching is virtual at the moment. So we use the universals, the, univers the universities rather, virtual classroom. As I mentioned right at the start, we used to teach this program with the professors flying out from Northampton, teaching for two days here in the United Arab Emirates. That COVID put a stop to that. And nothing about the program actually changed. The only thing was, instead of your professor being face to face in a classroom, your professor is now like I am now, using a virtual classroom. So they're still synchronous to the classes, you're still taught in them the same materials, the same content as you always have been. It's just the delivery methods that's changed because of COVID. And then eventually we will be able to get back to the face-to-face -face teaching, but there's no, it's very difficult to say when that might be at the moment. So that's the only difference that we have now because of COVID is that we're using the virtual classrooms to teach. We still have those workshops on a Friday and a Saturday, and you'll have a uh, tutor for every module. He will take you through and explain uh, the content of these workshops and uh, where to find information and lectures and all the sorts of things you need. And then as I mentioned, you'll have about 10 weeks then to do your assignments where you'll use the virtual learning environment, you'll use the university's library to be able to support you doing the, uh, to do the assignments, which you then hand in, then start your next module. 
Now, we are about to start, would you believe, the 28th intake of this Middle East intake this weekend, 5th and 6th of November. So for you guys here tonight, you, I'm sure, will be thinking about the next intake, which will be in February. We have three intakes a year. So as I said, we're on intake 28, which means we've been running the program for well, three intakes a year, not far off 10 years now, this Middle East intake, so for quite a long time. Uh, your timetable for the February intake will be out soon, within the next couple of weeks, where you'll have the exact dates of workshops and assignments. So that's how it's taught. What happens in these workshops, in these virtual workshops, we, as I say, I, I teach on the managing and organizational behavior. So it depends, you know, what subject you're doing, but generally your tutors will seek to do this. We'll introduce key concepts. We use short case studies, exercises, business games, whatever we think is relevant. We don't just sit here and talk to you for two days. That would be very boring. We uh, do try and, you know, we, we do try and use as many different me methods as we can. We demonstrate where to find resources, your books, your articles, etc., which are all available on the university's electronic library. There is no need to go and find books anywhere else. Everything you need is on the on the uh, university's library that you access uh, access virtually. And then a key part of these workshops as well is that we explain how to successfully complete the assignments. So they are a very important part of this University of Northampton program. And students love the workshop as well. And not just the teaching, it's also meeting and network with, networking with other people on the program. So that's what we do in the workshops. Assessment, all of the modules are assessed through some form of an assignment. So it might be an essay, a report, a case study. In the finance module, 50% of it is an online multiple choice quiz. So it's some form of an assignment. There's no formal exams where you sit down for two hours and just write, as you might, as you know what a formal exam is. And the reason for that is you know, the university likes to emphasize, uh, they really like you to give the opportunity to think about what you're writing, to be able to access resources, um, to be able to support your arguments, to be able to think about the practical implications, all of these things that you can't really do in, in exams. Exams are more about how much you can remember. So assignments are a different method that's suited better to an executive MBA program. And then when you get to the final module, you do a business research project. Some of it you will know it as a dissertation, and it's just a research project, and it's the major part of your MBA, MBA program, and I think the most rewarding part, where you do a bit of research on your own. Uh, and you have a supervisor that helps you out for that from the university, and it's about 15,000 words. So that's your last bit that you hand in, and that's your contribution, if you like. You actually give a contribution to knowledge by doing that, which is why I say it is a rewarding thing to do. Uh, entry requirements, fairly standard for an MBA program. You normally have a bachelor's degree, and two years of relevant work experience, uh, if you don't have a bachelor's degree, we call that non-standard, and we'd expect at least five years of relevant work experience. And when I say relevant, it means that you can demonstrate managerial responsibilities. You may not necessarily have the word manager in your job title, just that you can demonstrate that you have some sort of degree of planning over the work that's done, or organizing, leading, leading people, controlling how things are done. And I'm sure when you look at your jobs, you'll all find you have you do do these types of things. Lots and lots of support on the program. There's the University of Northampton's program leader, and you will meet her in the business research project module. Um, there's also the local program leader, which is of course me. I live in the region and I look after it. All of your tutors have an ex, uh, well, all of your modules have an expert tutor. So your finance person will have a finance expert, your marketing, a marketing expert, et cetera. You have the low, all of the university's administration and access to all of their resources. But we also have administration locally. If you can't find something or get stuck, we have some, um, Karen in our office can help, um, helps out, I can help out. There are various other people who can as well. 
And I mentioned the virtual learning environment we use. Northampton calls it the Northampton Integrated Learning Environment, or Nile. Every module has one of these sites. And on these sites, it has your virtual classroom, so you can access the workshops. It has all of your module activities. It has readings that your tutor might want you to do. It's where you submit your assignments. It's where you get your grades. So integrated into this one site is everything you need to complete each module. And as I mentioned, there's a very extensive online library at the university, more resources than you will ever need to be able to complete your assignments. Can't forget about the price. It is a very competitive price. Remember, this is not an online degree. You are being taught. It's an executive MBA part-time degree. Um, and for that, it is a very competitive price. And have a look at the Stafford Global website for the latest fees, because it cha can change between intakes. So I want to make sure you're getting the correct fee. Why else the Northampton MBA? The duration, 18 months, is I've found, and I've taught on many different MBA programs over the years, and some of them up to three and four years long. And I've also taught on full-time programs in the UK, which are just a year long. But 18 months is just about the right time for students to be able to balance their work and their home lives and their study, um, but also not to be so long that you lose motivation. So I think the duration is just about right for students to be able to actually, um, to be able to, to be able to balance all of the different needs they have and successfully come out with a degree. As I mentioned, there's loads of support, the teaching's very good, as is the assessment, which very strongly emphasizes job or vocational learning, as well as the theories. And that's what the program's all about, the University of Northampton program. It's very practical oriented. You know, it tells you things about how you are actually going to lead and manage people better on a day-to-day -day basis in the future. And that's attractive to employees who are more interested in practical knowledge and also makes studying for the EMBA more enjoyable and relevant to students. It's not too theoretically focused. It's all about the real world, if you like. All right, I think I've done pretty well for timing. A little bit over 15 minutes, but not too bad. Let me have a look at your questions. So the easiest way for me to, uh, to do this is to use your question box in the, uh, that you'll see on the right there. I'll bring up my questions and see what we've got. So I've got a few questions here. First is asking, do you accept exemptions based on extensive managerial work experience? Not on work experience, we, we don't accept exemptions. There's a good reason for that. You may have spent 20 years in marketing, but you still probably learn something in that marketing module. In fact, I'm pretty sure you would. So with extensive managerial experience, we don't accept exemptions, but the good thing is that will mean you have lots to write about, lots to talk about, lots to contribute to the class. All that experience is very, is very important and very useful on the program, but I guarantee you, you, you will learn more. Um, and the next question is, why are there no specializations in the MBA? Yeah, we, there are, of course, universities that offer specializations in the MBA, but this is a general MBA program, and it's relevant to everybody, if you like. Specialized, the MBA program was never really supposed to have specialisms when it first came about about 100 years ago and developed ever since. It was supposed to be the program that taught you all about the different functions of management, rather than specializing just in one particular topic. But they came about later and they have a use, but we've stuck to the, to the, to the ethos of the MBA that this is a general MBA that will be suitable for anyone in any industry, big or small, public sector, private sector, charity. Everyone needs to know these different functions of business and will be useful to them. Um, my next question, that the ver I have noticed that the workshops are virtual. Do these get recorded in the event that I cannot attend? Yes, absolutely they do. These workshops are a very important part of the program. And to get the most out of it, do attend. But if something happens and you can't make it, they are recorded and you'll find the recordings on that Nile site that I talked about. 
Um, oh, this is an interesting question. Can I take two modules at the same time so I can finish the program in a shorter time period? Not on this program. I wouldn't want you to try and finish it any shorter. As I mentioned, 18 months is just about perfect to be able to balance everything and successfully complete the program. It would just be too much trying to do a couple, two modules at once. Um, so my next question, what is the difference between the executive MBA and the one offered via Stafford? Um, so this one is offered through Stafford. As I mentioned at the start, Stafford is the marketing and recruitment, um, is the majority of what they do for the University of Northampton. But the EMBA itself is completely provided by the University of Northampton. Um, I, I, I guess your question is more about what's the difference between an, an executive MBA and just a normal MBA? And the simple answer is an executive MBA is designed for practicing managers, people that actually have experience. And the content and the delivery of the module is designed around people who can actually understand and apply those principles. You can do just an MBA, um, but, those, uh, but those at universities these days don't always need experience. So that's essentially the difference. Yes. Um, you know, it has developed and changed over the years, but essentially the executive MBA means it's designed for people who have management experience and are working as managers. Um, ba -ba. And then my last question here, is the MBA very difficult? Uh, it, remember it is master's level study at a British university, so um, there are certain standards. There, you know, British university has standards that you must meet. But if you put the work in, the vast majority of students do certainly pass. And a number of the students, of course, uh, don't have a bachelor's degree. They've just come on, uh, they've, been, got, uh, they've got the non-standard entry, so, and others have not studied for a long time since their bachelor's degree. So, you know, a lot of people, people most people are in the same boat, but they put the effort in that they do actually complete it. So is it difficult? Not if you put the effort in. Um, and as you say here, you, would you manage because you have a high position with lots of responsibilities? Absolutely. Everyone on this MBA program works, all got jobs, and so many of them do successfully complete. And how many day, hours a day must I dedicate to studying? When I talk to students, they give me in a rough idea of sort of the eight hours a week type of thing. That's sort of the, type, the, the sort of amount of time that they put in. But it does depend on the module. You might need to put in more time on some modules than you do on others. Also depends on the student. Some students will pick things up slightly faster than others, etc. But as a rough idea, if you can sort of give eight hours per week, not per day, that would be extremely tough. Eight hours a week, then you should be putting in the effort to actually successfully get uh, complete the program. All righty. Thanks for those questions. I think I've got managed to get the end of those but if you do have anything else that you need to ask me you're always welcome to email me at that address and I will certainly answer them for you and just bear in mind as I said you know it might seem like some time away before the next intake in February but it's not by the time you get your application together and you know everything else and then there's the the, the holidays and in, in between that Time goes very quickly. So, you know, you're best to get these applications in as soon as possible. Anyway, thanks very much, everyone. Thanks for listening and enjoy your evening. Bye for now.